seven years old. And I was mm-hmm. first, I actually first experienced molestation at that time. Okay. But yes. And I know it's, you know, a lot of, it's common, you know, mm-hmm. but of course at that age, you don't know what, com- you know, what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're, you just know it, it felt wrong. Yeah. It's all you know, you know what I mean? But you didn't know that, you know, it was wrong, obviously, at the time until later on. You're like, wait a minute, you know, I wasn't yeah. supposed to do that. You know, they weren't supposed to do that to me. But yeah. So anyways, but that's one of my. Was that from a was that, was that was that from a family friend or was it within the family? It was, yeah, it was a family. It was well, actually my uh, brother's friends. Right, right, one of my, yeah. OK. OK. Yeah, it was a big. Um, yeah, it, that had an impact. Obviously. OK how I saw like guys okay, yeah. away, yeah. you know, in the beginning, but yeah, it was, it was a difficult time. Yeah. Because it wasn't only that one time, you know, it happened again. Yeah. yeah. When I was like 12. So yeah. Yeah. I think it's, yeah. I know it's pretty common in our, yeah, I guess culture. Did Not- you ever, did you ever bring it up or address it with somebody or the family? Mm, yeah. It was somebody like that I trusted, like who was I was always close to, of course, like my sister. I brought mm-hmm. it up to her like later on, you know. Um, but yeah, I would never like tell my parents. <laughs> I want to ask you why? Why did you? Why did you feel like you wanted to tell your parents? Um, I know a lot of people will like probably feel the same way as me, but for yeah. me, like, I felt like. They wouldn't believe me or like it's just like a shaming thing in a way like i don't know like i just felt like i shouldn't talk about it you know what i mean like because yeah yeah not many people want to talk about it to be honest <laughs> yeah or like you know something that we would actually like cover up like eh, like it's nothing it didn't really you know like it wasn't maybe they didn't mean to do that to me or something like i don't like it was just yeah a lot of questions that came into mind all right we are live <laughs> we are live y'all what's up everybody welcome to another episode of the gava club podcast where we share healthy conversations experiences apply knowledge and stories to promote happiness love success uh my name is will uh, i am the host of this show if you guys are watching this for the very first time thank you so much for tuning in thank you for watching thank you for the love and support please like and subscribe to my channel if you've been watching, been subscribing, uh, been watching all my content, sending me so much positive feedback and love. Thank you so much for all you guys. Mad respect to all of you guys. Keeps the fire burning, keeps the inspiration going for me to keep doing what I do. Provide so much content, quality content for all you guys to watch. Um, I am excited today, y'all. I am excited. I have a very special guest, very special guest uh, all the way. One of our someone's sisters from all the way from Cali. Uh, she is an entrepreneur. Uh, she's one of, uh, one of my uh, great followers, always been following my journey through social media, through Instagram. So I'm very excited to have her, very grateful to have her. So I, don't, I just want to say thank you so much for giving me the opportunity today to be on my show and for you to share your life story for everybody that's going to be watching my show today. So, uh, but I'll allow her to introduce herself real quick. So it's all you. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Will. Um I'm so it's actually my honor <laughs> to be here and on this on your platform. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, really appreciate it. Yep. So um, yeah, like my name is Trudy Tuitasi. Um, I'm actually I am 32 years old. Um, I don't think I look it right, but anyway, <laughs> just like, <laughs> um, I'm currently tuning in from Downey, California, but I was actually. Um, born in um, Santa Ana, but I was raised in Compton, most specifically, yep. yes, Compton, California, most specifically Park Village, yes, so a lot of people, I know a lot, not all of y'all, but a lot of people know, you know, Park Village, Compton Crips, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a, yeah, Crip neighborhood, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's where I was raised, so yeah. <laughs> all right, um, nice, thank you, thank you. I, like I said, you look good, by the way. You look good. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited to hear life story to have you, have you on this podcast. Uh, but I guess we'll get started. You know, uh, the very first question I want to ask you, 
I know a lot of people don't know who you are. So can you give a quick synopsis of your life story, your background, and how did you, how did you grow up? Yeah. Um, yeah, I grew up in, obviously, uh, Park Village back then was a ghetto. I just like, that was <laughs> yep. ghetto. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was humble, you know, humble beginnings. I love it, though. You know, it's it was, you know, they get we get what we get, you know, and we mm-hmm. learn to love what we have you know, um, but uh, I was, I grew up in church as well, like I, mm-hmm. I we grew up going to church all the time, um, from, yeah, from, since I was born, I guess, I was raised in the church, um, then the church is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, actually, so. Oh, yeah. okay, Mormon? Yes. Nice. Yes, okay. Yes. So I grew up, yeah, <laughs> um, we're always raised in the, in the church, yeah, yeah. and um I can say that had a big impact, you know, in how obviously how I handled life as well, to be mm-hmm. honest. Um, I was actually, uh, um, I recall when I was in, well, living, you know, in Park Village, I recall um, being only seven years old. I believe, yeah, I was seven years old. And I was mm-hmm. first, I actually first experienced molestation at that time. Okay. But, yes. And I know it's, you know, a lot of, it's common, you know, mm-hmm. but of course at that age, you don't know what, com- you know, what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you're, you just know it, it felt wrong. Yeah. It's all you know, you know what I mean? But you didn't know that, you know, it was wrong, obviously at the time until later on, you're like, wait a minute, you know, I wasn't yeah. supposed to do that. You know, they were supposed to do that to me, but yeah. So anyways, but that's one of my. Was really that from a, was that, was that, was that from a, family friend or was it within the family it was, uh, yeah it was a family it was well actually my uh, brother's friends right, right one of my yeah okay okay yeah it was a big um yeah it that had an impact out okay how i saw like guys okay, yeah away yeah you no know, in the beginning but yeah it was it was a difficult time yeah because it wasn't only that one time you know it happened again yeah, yeah when i was like 12 so yeah yeah I think it's yeah I know it's pretty common in our yeah I guess culture did you ever did you ever bring it up or address it with somebody or the family Mm, yeah it it was somebody like that I trusted like who was I was always close to of course like my sister I brought Mm -hmm. it up to her like later on you know um but yeah I would never like tell my parents (laughs) I want to ask you why? Why did you? Why did you feel like you wanted to tell your parents? Um, I know a lot of people will like probably feel the same way as me, but for yeah. me, like, I felt like they wouldn't believe me, or like it's just like a shaming thing in a way. Like I don't know. Like I just felt like I shouldn't talk about it. You know what I mean? Like because yeah, yeah not many people want to talk about it to be honest (laughs) yeah or like you know something that we would actually like cover up like eh like it's nothing it didn't really you know like it wasn't maybe they didn't mean to do that to me or something like I don't like it was just yeah a lot of questions that came into mind yeah yeah um like you said um I feel like yeah it is something that happens a lot uh a lot of families I'm not saying all families but it happens a lot yeah. Um, uh, and of course, I do know there's a lot of people out there that may be facing this uh, similar situation. But I do want to ask you this, like, why do you feel like that for many Polynesian girls and, and guys, uh, especially when they're younger, why do they feel like that nobody will believe them? Like, where does that come from? Because, and, that's, and that's something that's very interesting because I, I do, that's something I'm trying to break. You know, that's, that's one of yeah. the reasons why I started my platform. One of the reasons why I started the uh, the Golf Club podcast, where people could come on and speak freely without criticism and judgment. Yeah. Where people, people, I do believe in love and understanding, because I always believe that number one, we're all gonna make mistakes. No one's perfect, right? But criticism and judgment only tears people apart. It doesn't bring people together. No. So uh, I, I'm a big believer in family. I'm a big believer in keeping the family together. But that could, families can only be kept together. Uh, through, through open discussions and with love and understanding right so yeah. that's not that's one of my 
that's one of the, the things in the, in our culture I'm trying to break. So, but I want to ask you because this has happened to you. So you have a better understanding and, and uh, concept and, and perspective uh, because this is something that you experienced. So why do you feel like growing up? As a, and think about it, you're a child, right? You're a kid. Yeah. And, and as a kid, you're aware of these things, right? And uh, for me, it's just kind of sad that the kids have to go through, go through these things and feel these feelings, but that's, that's just the real world that we live in. These things do happen. So yeah. for you, if you, want, if you want to take go back to it, why did you feel like as a kid growing up that you just you felt like that nobody was going to believe you? Where, where did that come from? Was it something that you've seen within the culture itself? Was it something you've seen within your family that you just felt like that? Because I always, because the way I see it is like, kids should never feel uncomfortable coming to their parents. Yeah, that's true. That, that, that should never happen. But of course, I understand something must have happened or there was there must have, something they, they saw growing up that prevented you from having the confidence to go and tell your parents. So I do want to ask you, why did you feel that way as a kid? That Why did you, you feel like that nobody would believe you, even if your own parents wouldn't believe you? Where did that come from growing up? I don't know. I, it's, I, you know, that's a good question, to be honest. Yeah. It just feels like, I don't know. You just, I, it's true. It's, that's a good question. Like, why? Yeah. 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 Why did yeah. you feel that yeah. way? Yeah. When, like, I should be open, right? Like, you should yeah. be open to, like, or feel that way, like, feel comfortable enough to yeah. talk to your own parents about exactly what just happened. Yeah. Especially something like as, 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 as severe as molestation. That's a big, that's yeah. a big one, right? So, why are you like this? I mean, and yeah, I want to ask you. I that guess question, yeah. part of me was like, I don't know, like I didn't, I don't know, I guess I just didn't care about, it. I don't know, that's, <laughs> that is a good question. Well, I well, like, well, now, well, I guess because he was always around as well, like the family, so it was like, I don't know, like a part of me felt like don't say nothing because he's always like coming around and okay with everybody, like, I don't know. Well, I do understand, well, for me, okay, I get it when when you're really young, right? Where you don't know any better, right? You don't know what's yeah, happening. Course. You don't, so you don't understand what's going on. Yeah. Um, so, Did so I can understand. Better? Yeah. So when it, so later when you finally understood what was going on, when you yeah. finally understood, okay, this is messed up, right? This is this is fucked yeah. up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So you finally understood that. Yeah. Okay. So I understand the kid as a kid. You, we don't have the knowledge and the intellect to understand yeah, what's going on. Exactly. So that's, so that's, so that's, so I understand that part, but the moment, so take me back to the moment when you finally realize that this is wrong. This is fucked up. This, this should never happen. Um, mm -hmm. Why did you still feel like that you couldn't, when you fully understood what was going on and the, you know, the severity of, of what the other person was doing to you? Um, why did you still feel like that you couldn't go and convey that message to your parents or to anybody that was willing to listen to you? Yeah. Well, the second time it happened, I was twelve, right? Yeah. And I was already aware, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. That it was wrong. Um, but it was a different person. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and this time it was actually. Um, I don't mean to be laughing about it, but now I'm just looking at it like. Yeah. 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 It's all you know, done and over with. But mm -hmm. that time it was like a like a uncle. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. It was like, oh no, like at that time I was like, eh, just leave it alone, Trudy. Like he's going to yeah. leave anyway because he was only visiting like from out of town. And I was like, yeah, like he's going to get out of here anyway. Just leave it alone, Trudy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then I'll just sweep it under the rug. But I don't know. I think it's, why do we do that? That's a good question because it's like, yeah. It's fear, I guess. It's fear of what they're gonna say, what they're gonna think of you, and him, or maybe I don't. I guess I also think about the other person, you know, like what they're gonna. I know, like my dad is. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, like oh no, <laughs> like she's like, like I don't want somebody to die. Like I don't know. Like <laughs> it's like that. Like I think about the other person as well. It's not like I just think about myself. Like, I know it's weird to say that. I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I don't just okay. think about, like, I know it's, I don't, does that make sense? Like, what I'm yeah. saying is, like, yeah. I not only think about now, but I think about the consequence that would happen. Like, if yeah. I were to say something, like, to the other person. 
Yeah. Like, oh no. Like I don't want to say it because I know like how crazy my dad is. Like okay. so it's like one of those things where it's like, oh no. Like I don't want him to go like off and just cause more more turmoil or okay. like like drama. Like I don't know. Yeah. I don't does that make sense? No, no, no. That makes sense for a 12 year old to think like that. Yeah, right. like I was thinking, like, oh no, yeah. like I don't want yeah. you know, anything like bad to happen to my dad as well. Like, you know, like he, you know, goes off and something happens. So yeah, I, yeah. I just, no, I know. Okay, I'm the type to like think about consequences as well, like of my of what happens if I were, you know, if I were to do something. That's that's just how I am. Like, yeah, I just like. No, no, I no. I, I know I understand that. No, I, and also you're still 12 years old. You know, I feel like we when when it comes to like tra traumatic things, we take it differently depending on how uh, depending on what age you are. You know, yeah. if, if you get molested at 12, it's different. If you get molested at right now your age, you're gonna <laughs> because yeah, yeah. of how, because of, because of, your mindset is totally different. So um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, so I under so I okay that that I understand that. Um, okay. So you just felt like that. Um, you just felt like you just you just didn't want any problems to happen. Um, yeah. I didn't want any more like things to come out from what I was going through. I guess like I does that. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I saw it. Like I was like, no, no, no. If I were to say something, like I know how my dad is already, so it would be like more crazy. Like I, I just don't want to. Okay. <laughs> I'm the type to like, yeah. I guess kind of like, yeah. You know, what of myself. Yeah. And then just deal with it. But I obviously didn't deal with it alone. You know, I had um, like my sister or like somebody like with me mm -hmm. uh, who knew. And then, yeah. And then I was always in the church. So, I mean, that helps a lot. I was just like, yeah. Like, obviously, that helped me so much, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one, one of the, uh, one of, because I've, I've had, guests on my show before and they talk about these things also and just people I know personally you know they always say that one of the things that you know I guess makes it well one of the reasons why they felt like they never uh had the confidence to share it to anybody because you know growing up you know the way Polynesians are uh children are taught is like not never to speak up you true. know never to challenge anything no right? that is true yeah it's yeah they they tell you shut up you don't know what you're talking about yeah, exactly <laughs> you know they so, tell you hey you're stupid you're just a little moi mimi you know yeah, like, yeah. You don't say nothing like, do you okay. feel like that, that, that do you feel like that statement is true to you based on your experience yes. like that that, that yeah, also had that an impact does. no that yeah. does yeah it does have a bit yeah a big impact as well yeah 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 because you are told it's true though you are you are told like eh, you're just a moi mimi you don't know what you're talking about just listen yeah. to the elders yeah and then it's crazy because okay i'm not gonna lie yeah like sometimes you're you hear your dad talking highly of this guy yeah the one that freaking molested you like yeah I, yeah i don't mean to say it you know i'm just gonna say it like it is right yeah yeah like we'll talk highly of that person like this person's this this person's this okay yes they're all that but guess what <laughs> you don't know that what he you know you don't know that he did something to me but you know yeah. you keep it like ugh. Yeah. So, anyways, but yeah, it's it's true though. Yeah, because they have all these like you know things good about that person, but yeah, therefore they still, you know, done what they did to me. But I mean, you know, I don't know. I just move forward. Like I just yeah, don't say it because I don't. Yeah, I don't, like you said, why, why, right? Why do you? Yeah. Not? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because for me, I'm all, like a break. Yeah. What? I, yeah, because what I'm trying to do is trying to like go to the root of the problem, right? Because I don't. Yeah. Really, number one, I don't want this to happen to anybody. Nobody would want that to happen to anybody. Yeah. But, um, but it's just sad to see that so many people like fail to fail, uh, to to act upon the things that happen to these kids. Like especially, I think one of the problems a lot of people, the base of my conversation with a lot of people, is like, they're. Uh, the, uh, I mean, my personal opinion, I feel like a lot of the our cultural aspects doesn't, like, like, it's not responsible for the behavior, but it 
amplifies the behavior, if, if that makes sense. No, it does. Yeah. So like our culture, so, yeah, it is. So it's, our culture, our culture is not responsible for that person to come in your life and molest you, right? But some of yeah. our culture, but some of our culture ap- aspects helps amp- amplify and protect him, like yeah. Polynesian, Polynesian culture where we, the kids are not allowed to speak and challenge anything, uh, especially for elders. Um, so anybody, so the elder, uh, people who are elders, I feel like people who are doing those things to kids understand that they, they kind of use that to their advantage. They know in their mind, well, they're not, nobody's going to believe them. Yeah, you know anything. Yeah. yeah, so they use like our culture and, and traditions that we have to their advantage and they kind of use that in a way to manipulate and do what they do. Yeah. And the question, what I'm trying to do is like, I want people to see that and start making ch- changes within the culture. And a lot of people, when I talk to people, especially Polynesians, that when you talk about changing culture, uh, because a lot of Polynesians have big pride in their culture, oh, they, yeah. feel, they feel like that they, they feel like a, I'm disrespecting by the culture by questioning the culture. True. By, que- by questioning the, tra- the by questioning the traditions, the culture, our way of life, for a lot of Polynesians, especially the elder Polynesians, they feel like, oh, I'm I'm just this young guy trying to disrespect them." Yeah, <laughs> but, of course. But, but what I'm trying to convey to everybody is like, no, there's there's a way we do things in Polynesians that encourage bad behavior. It's true. And uh, yeah, so we need to figure out what we need to do to make these changes. And like I said, one of the things we need to do is like have open, you know promote open. Open, open conversation with our kids and promote them I, yeah i agree with that yeah i don't have children but i mean oh yeah sorry i didn't mention that as well I'm yeah, married, but i don't have any children so yeah yeah i would definitely encourage that yeah you yeah. know to let them come to me no matter how big you know how whatever the issue is mm-hmm. yeah even though like i'm you know like I know a lot of people have issues with that, but yeah, it's true though. We need more openness, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and also um, um, for me, it's 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 so weird to me. I don't know, like for me, like it's very common, like it's common sense to me that if a kid comes to me and talks about abuse or sexual abuse or molestation, for me, I would immediately believe that kid because. No kid would make those things up. Yeah, it's true. Like, you, like <laughs> for me, that's it's, it's, it's common sense, right? Like, why would a seven year old kid make make a story up about their uncle? Like, their mind is not even developed to that yeah. point to make to have that type of level of thinking to plot <laughs> the demise of another person. No, if, if for me, like, if a kid really comes to you and it tells you that they're uh, somebody that builds them, like ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time, it's probably right. Yes. Right. Yes. Like kids don't kids don't kids don't just make these these terrible things up. And yeah. it's for me it's just sad to see that so many like people or adults like don't understand that and just all, immediately shut down that kid. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. And never and never cross their mind like why would this kid make this up? Like no kid doesn't. No. You know. They're not aware of that. Oh, so exactly. So if they do come to you and talk about these things, it's absolutely most of the time it's a fact. It did happen. Yeah. But then I feel and like, so, oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, yep. Then I feel like sometimes as well, like that parent or person, whoever, you know, their guardian. Yeah. But also have gone through something and they're just like maybe ignoring it because they feel it within themselves as well. Yeah. So it could be possibly something that's similar. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, does that make sense? Like sometimes I feel like maybe they just. Oh, yeah, that's also like, true. They feel something as well and they just like kind of put it away because they don't want to go through like they don't oh. want to deal with it. No, that, no, 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 that makes sense. I, I never thought about that way that a lot of our par- parents probably happened. That probably happened to them as well. Yeah. And they, and, and they haven't yet dealt. Yeah. They'll, they, yeah. They locked, they've, they've so, locked it away. Yeah, so maybe now that it's happening to their kid or whoever, like they don't want to deal with it because they haven't yet. Yeah. Because it it's going to open up a door for them. It's going to open up like yeah. a wound, uh, you know, yeah. walk, walk, that, open up. Yeah. A, yeah. Yeah, a wound that they haven't yet healed as well. Exactly. That they haven't, you know, totally. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, I don't know if that makes sense. But. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay, I never saw it that way, but that also makes sense as well. But I also feel like, in, um, I want to ask you this, you feel like sometimes uh, in the Polynesian culture, we feel like that the, the reputation of the family is like more important than, than the, uh, than the, than the, uh, than 
than the individual person in the family. Because I feel like some, and I've, I feel like I feel like Polynesians we're so um, like we want to we want to be seen as as, as perfect. Yeah. We want to be our yeah. public image and reputation is so important for us. Like we don't want to be seen within the community that we are weak, that we are vulnerable, that something is wrong going on with our family. Like, so a lot of times I feel like Polynesians, they kind of just throw things under the rug. If they do, if you do come speak to them, they'll just like shut it down because, True. because we, you know, unfortunately we care more of what people sure. think of us more than what happened to the kid. Do you feel I, like that? That happens a lot? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I know. I mean, it's, it's actually common within some of my family. Like, you know, it's, okay. more, like, it's more about image than, yeah. yeah. But yet, you know, your kids are all suffering and, you know, just like going through all kind of like, you know, um, trials and stuff, but like, yeah, yeah, I think that's true. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, yeah. If anybody out there that's watching this and if you've gone through something similar, I highly encourage you to speak up and seek help. Yeah. Um, don't be afraid. Oh my gosh, you can call me. Shoot, I'll give you. <laughs> I know. I, I do want to ask. I do want to ask you. Uh, how did you heal, and how did you overcome that experience, uh, that traumatic experience that happened to you in your life? Um, yeah, yeah um, I think I think that's something that's be very interesting for a lot of people out there that's watching this and have gone through a similar experience. And I trying to figure out how do, do they heal because um, sometimes, like I said, some, some people never heal, and and this carries on their whole life and they carried this burden or this pain yeah. uh, silently their whole life. So I want to ask you, how were you able to heal within yourself? So you, so you can be able to move on and like yeah. live your, your, your best life. Yeah. Well, it wasn't easy. Like you said, you know, um, I actually, it took a while. Um, yeah. I think honestly, I think that's how I started like smoking like cigarettes and like, yeah. I actually went towards that. Okay. You know, like, Cause I had, you know, I was dealing with it, you know, everybody deals with it differently. Differently. Yep. yep. Um, and I dealt with it that way. <laughs> yep. Drinking and yeah, just like drinking and smoking <laughs> and yeah. Um, yep. And I was, um, you know, a member of the church of Jesus Christ, you know, we yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. but okay. It happens. It happens. Yes. We're not it perfect happens. though. Yep. You know? yep. Nobody's perfect. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, that's the, I think that's the beauty of, jesus christ anyway i mean that's what he's done you know he's paid for our sins so we're always able to yes go through him okay yes. that's what i mean that's what really healed me to be honest is mm -hmm. you know the gospel like just knowing that um just basically seeing um them as god's children because they are even mm -hmm. though they did what they did to me I, mm -hmm. I know that, you know, the Lord loves them just as much. Mm -hmm. So seeing it that way made me realize, you know, like, oh, you know, I, I'm good. I have to forgive them. I have to forgive them. So I, you know, prayed and, you know, just kept praying about it and just asking, you know, the Lord for strength and, you know, to move forward because, I need, I needed, I needed to move forward. Otherwise I would have just kept, you know, letting that, I don't want to let that hold me hostage. You know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I can't, you know, you have to, you have to break those chains because if, if you just keep like dwelling on <clears> that, <throat> just keep sorrow, like keeping yourself in that sorrow or in that, you know, in that mind space yeah. of I'm this victim you're not going to get anywhere. I'm just like, you're yeah. not going to go anywhere. I wouldn't even probably be married, to be honest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wouldn't even have been able, you know? Yeah, no, I wouldn't have been able. Because I know a lot of people, honestly, like, when things happen like that, they actually go, they, like, it at them. They actually, yeah. and some of them I know, like, they'll probably go gay. Or, yeah. you know, like, because of that trauma, traumatic situation that happened. Um, but I mean, no, I, I, I couldn't, I, I think that's pretty much how I got over it. It's just through praying and just knowing how my life would turn out if I just kept letting this affect me. So what was it like a natural, uh, 
transition a transition for you to to think that way or did you like seek or well, you said prayer though that's you know that's a beautiful thing you know yeah um, I did pretty much uh, well or was there any people that you talked to was there any books that you read did you any things that you had to do differently uh to help you um achieve that enlightenment to move on from and, and, and heal from that trauma uh that you could give to people that's watching this right now they may be going through a similar experience so you know prayer is one of them you know i, I do believe yeah, yeah. in prayer the love of that's jesus christ you know uh yeah. everything but uh, what are, but but what there are other things that you did that you can remember? Mm. I'm trying to think. <laughs> well, like yeah. Oh I, no no if, if if you didn't yeah. that's fine. But I just, I just wanted to ask. No, I mean yeah, there are books as well that I would recommend. But I mean, I have to go look for them. They're in my closet. But <laughs> but yeah, there's books I love reading. I mean honestly, if you read certain books, I mean oh my god, it's just books are amazing. Like more yeah, what, knowledge more power to you to be yeah. honest you have to read i think you're constantly learning you have to constantly learn because i'm not just getting this through nothing right yeah yeah exactly <laughs> but, yes but revelation as well i've received do i mean through my prayers i receive revelations as well yeah you know because you do receive answers truly i believe at least that's my yeah <laughs> so like when you pray solely and cry out to like <clears throat> really cry out to the lord yeah like, because this was something that happened not once, twice, but three times. So, yeah, yeah I was, yeah. <laughs> the third, the was, third time, what, what age were you at the third time? On the third oh, time? Um, let me think back. I was in ninth grade. Ninth grade. Oh, so like around. Yeah, so like 15. 15, okay. Yeah, maybe 15, 14. I think, yeah, around there. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, so that was my third time. Yeah. Relative. And then, so what happened? To, uh, so I want to ask you, like, uh, when you go into your healing process, like, um, is there any? Was there like, is there a specific? Usually, when I talk to people that have gone through like a very traumatic event, yeah, they they always talk about like a, a moment in in their healing process where there was an idea, there was a like, quote, there was like a, a answer that just somebody told them, that, and that just like forever changed their life and forever was able for them to be allowed to heal. Was there so? Was there, was there, do you remember oh. that moment of time where you were praying or you were, whatever you did and then, and, it, and then oh, something just, and then something like a light bulb went in your head, like a specific idea, a quote or something you just heard. And then that just like changed your mindset. And then uh, I just, I'm just interested to hear that. Oh my goodness. No, I'm just like, no, it was, I'm it was like, just, you know what? I'm going to tell you because like the third time it happened, my mother was actually diagnosed with colon cancer. Okay. Yes. So my mother was already, um, she was going, yeah. So she was, she had to go through chemo and all that. Okay. Um, and that's when that happened to me. Like, okay. I, like the last time. So I was already like dealing like with that. Okay. So I kind of like, I don't know. I think for me, she became more important than whatever I was going through. Got you. Okay. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense. No. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, my mother, yeah, she was going through that. And, and to me, I was like more worried about what she was going through and just focusing on her. Okay. And then we were moving to Utah during that transit. Like, we made a transition actually um, to, to Utah from here. Okay. So, but I was, yeah, I think that was my focus to be honest, like was on her. So I didn't really care about what I was going through. Yeah be honest like I mean yeah I did care obviously because I still remember it and I I, I hated it and I actually had to avoid that person <laughs> um a lot you know what I mean yeah because he was you know we were we're related um so I was avoiding that person at all like as much as I could um and then I was also like I said like just I I, I mean I talked to my sister about it I talked to like friends about it as well like and they were like what the heck you know like that's yeah. not cool like how, how do you avoid it like yeah when they're like always around you did it and I'm like well I make sure I'm not around that person when I'm by myself like yeah and yeah. They're like okay I'm like yeah I always make sure I'm like with everybody and then you know but anyway um yeah I think that's a thing of mine like I feel like I'm more like so worried about others than I am myself. Like okay. I that's just my thing. Like I noticed, like I, I at least that's I notice. 
like I put others before <clears throat> And then I put me to the back burner, but I still deal with it in my own mm -hmm. way. But um, yeah, I think, yeah. But then, so, like I said, the, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead, no, go ahead, yeah. Like I said, like the gospel, like the church really helped me a lot because yep. I've yep. always gone to church during these times. So it helped me learn about forgiveness, learn about repentance and for, you know, and all that. And, Oof. you know, so I, I, um, I knew in my heart that I had to forgive him because, well, forgive all of them because, you know, that was, that kept holding me back. It kept pushing me no matter how many times I kept, you know, trying to improve it happened again. Right. So this yeah. is the last time it happened to me. And, um, it's hard because you're like trying to improve and then it just, something happens and kicks you back right into that, yeah, yeah. that hole again, or, you know, that little, that ditch, you know, that you're trying to get out of. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, oh my gosh, all I can say is I'm grateful that I know Jesus, <laughs> just like, because without him, I couldn't, like, I couldn't get through it, because, mm -hmm. you know, I knew in my heart that I had to forgive to just be happy and be at peace, and, um, yeah, you just fully live, you know, I didn't want to, like, just keep holding that against anybody, even in dating, right? Like, like it's it'll be hard to be with somebody, you know, when you're going when you've gone through those kind of traumatic situations, mm -hmm. which it was when I first started dating my husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Years ago, <laughs> um, it was hard because I was always like I was still like twitch, like kind of like you know you twitch or something when something like. Like, I don't like if he like goes like that to you, you're like, oh, shoot. Like, <laughs> you're just, yeah. it kind of happens. Like, you're like, oh, it's not, you know, it's you're not. Still, you're still yeah. experiencing that trauma later on in life. Yeah. Yeah. Like, even when yeah. I was dating, you know, dating, like, yeah. it was, I was still uncomfortable with some of the things, you know, yeah. that come to do, right? Yeah. Because of those traumatic situations. Yeah. But I knew I had to get rid of that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I, well, I had to get over it because it wouldn't help me to fully be present and be enjoy today. Enjoy the love with you know that I have yeah. when yeah. we were eating. You know what I mean? So yeah. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not. I guess, like I said, like uh, I feel like the way you're saying is just you know, just you know, what's that one of the quotes? You know, time heals everything. And, you know, so it did. As you just grew older, through you know, through the help of God and your relationship with God, and uh, you know, yeah. and you having you having a, a big heart to forgive those people, you know, most people can't do that, but you have that heart and the guidance from God, and that allowed you to heal and move on. And yeah. I, that's a. I'm actually like it's crazy because people tell me like, oh, you still see them? Do you still see that person? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I said hi, and I actually like as one one time I actually helped him. It's yeah, I actually helped him with it because he has family, right? He has yeah. a family now. And so I actually helped him with couponing and I gave him, you know, like a lot of my like coupons and I told him, look, here, this is for your, you know, this is for laundry detergent. Go get your laundry detergent for your kids and your family. And they were like, what? They're like, you did that? I'm like, yeah, because in the end, um, he is. I, you know, I, I feel like we have to see others through God's eyes, you know, through God's view, yeah. you know, and it's not easy, but it's what's going to bring happiness, you know, to, um, well, to the world. <laughs> it's like, we want, yeah, the, yeah. we want that kind of love in the world. <laughs> I'm like, so yeah. Anyway, okay. yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, all I'm saying is you have a very unique and uh, forgiving and big heart. And mad respect to you. Um, you know, for me, if it's something to happen, if that's something happened to me or somebody else, you know, I'm putting that person in jail. <laughs> that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I just pray and hope he doesn't do it to somebody else, of course. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. That's, that's hard, though. No, I, I remember I did some research on that. Like when it comes to like sexual abuse, you know, they said that the majority of sexual abusers were. Uh, uh, they were they were victim themselves, you oh. know. They were yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, so they were victim themselves. So uh, they're just continuing the cycle, continue the cycle oh. because it happened because it happened to them. 
Um, so naturally, a lot of them just keep doing it uh, to see. other people, you know. Um, to them. So, yeah. So that's why if you ask me, because, uh, you know, if somebody does it, there's a high chance of them doing it again, you know. Uh, especially, I do believe, like, if you don't hold people accountable for their behavior, then most of the time they're going to repeat that same behavior, you know. Yeah, okay. You know, yeah, real. I mean. but yeah, I feel so. like eventually karma will get that person. <laughs> Well, yeah, it, yeah, but I, I, for me, I, the way I, I'm, I'm just looking out for the kids, you know, yeah. like, like, you know, we, I yeah. want the cycle, I want the cycle to stop. So, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, we can forgive them. Like I said, we can take your life, forgive them, but forgive them through behind forgive bars. Yeah, <laughs> Put them I mean, behind bars, and I can that, forgive you in jail. Okay, okay, <laughs> that makes sense. No, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just. I mean, I for me, like, I'm. It's just, I just, just. just I do understand as human beings, like, you know, the behaviors that we exhibit, if it's not, we always keep doing, repeating the same behavior if it's, if it's not hold it, held accountable, especially bad behavior, right? Like as a kid, yeah. bad kid does bad behavior, what do you do? Yeah. You, you hold that kid accountable. <laughs> yeah. Polynesia stop, you know, <laughs> right? Thanks, uh, yeah, because I got yeah. spanked a lot, of course. Yeah, I yeah, got exactly. when I was younger. So yeah. as, as adults, it's the same thing. So. Uh, but I do believe in what you said, like, you know, in forgiveness, like, because it doesn't matter what we do in life, like, we have to let that go. You know, we have to let those go, with, regardless of what it is. And, um, and you know, forgiveness, letting go, healing, it's all the same thing. But you have to, you have to find a way that that event doesn't trigger you no more and doesn't affect your life no more. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, uh, yeah, so if anybody out there going through struggles or issues, I learned to move on from it. And so that way um, you can enjoy today. It's really, really hard to enjoy the love and the joy and the peace today if you're still thinking about yesterday or what happened in the past. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But like I said, if you if you ask me, put them all in jail, y'all. <laughs> put them all in jail. Yeah. <laughs> and the cycle. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> that's just my opinion. I just want to say yeah. that. <laughs> say that. Okay. All right. So uh, um, thank you for sharing. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Now, did you, were you about to say something? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so I do want to ask you, so uh, I just want to first and also want to say to you, thank you for sharing uh, that part of your story. I uh, yeah. really appreciate that. I know that that was a very traumatic and intimate moment that happened in your life, but uh, I do realize there's a lot of people out there that's going through it. And I know that's something that happens in the Polynesian community that often uh gets thrown under the rug and we don't bring and we don't address so the fact that you shared it today and you have the courage to do it today i really appreciate that and uh thank you for sharing that you know because i do know somebody might watch this today and uh, that can help them encourage them that you know there is more to them there is more to their life uh than what they what that what happened to them and also just let them know uh encourage them to uh speak up and get that help because as Polynesians, sometimes we try to deal with things alone. I just want to tell everybody out there, get help. You have to get help. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah for sure. Okay. Um, All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now I'm going to share about my mother. Yeah. Remember, go ahead. She had cancer, but yeah, yeah. When I was dealing with that in high school. Um, and we moved to Utah, actually. And um, that's where our house is at, where my brother, he lives in there right now. But um, she actually... Um, passed away um before you know i was able to it was my junior junior year in high school yeah so i dealt with that really hard because she was yeah. so, um she was very god-fearing always going to church she was the one that making me go to <laughs> she was the one that um but like uh, yeah i dealt with that really hard because i wasn't smoking or drinking all that and then i ended up doing it again to be honest <laughs> yeah to cope with it so when she passed yeah i dealt yeah. with it like that way and then I honestly got sick like really like after she passed mm -hmm. I got really sick and yeah. um I, I don't know I felt like it was a wake-up call to be honest <laughs> yeah um for me I um got really sick and I didn't know what was going on with me and then um come to find out I was diagnosed with uh, lupus systemic lupus mm-hmm um, and I was like, what's that? You know, because nobody had like heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. Before. What is what is what is lupus? 
So systemic lupus is where your antibodies, you know, that fight off. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. They're actually fighting against the good cells and the bad. Oh, okay. They can't so differentiate it, the difference. Yes, it doesn't differentiate. Yeah, the, between good and bad cells. Good. So it's okay. Pretty much attacking everything. Yeah. So your so immune system is pretty, pretty yeah. weak. Okay. Yeah, I was pretty. Yeah, I was really compromised and. Um, yeah and then like literally like let's see five years later after she passed yeah i had to actually start dialysis okay yeah hemodialysis mm -hmm. which yeah which was um i never thought i was gonna be on i used to always take my grandparents you might know I mean yeah yeah i used to call my grandpa and sit in there and then now they're like oh you gotta be on that i'm like what oh crap i'm like uh, it was hard. I actually spent my 21st birthday in the hospital. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. That's when I had to start dialysis for the first time. Okay. Yeah, it was crazy. But yeah, I don't know. It was, it was a lot of suffering during that time. It, yeah. Was, like right after her loss, I was like, Ugh. and then this happens. I'm like, oh, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. Like who starts? The, I'm like, Ugh, I'm only 21 and I got to be on dialysis. I'm just like, yeah oh my god i was like oh no but yeah i think i'm not gonna like during that time it was a lot of depression mm -hmm. a lot of uh and i believe that what you tell your you know what you keep telling yourself yeah it affects you obviously if it, it really affects your whole well-being you're like you're talking about you know inner self-talk yeah because i noticed when I kept saying like, ah, like when I just yeah. kept like telling myself, why, why me? Why didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like I'm over here getting my diaper changed at 21. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you're like, yeah, like, yeah. Was, like, I was literally like crying. Yeah. And, like just, yeah, just so much going on during that time. And I was like, oh, why me? Why me? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Why me? Why me? And just, yeah, and then they even had me on like what they what they call those? Oh, psychiatry, like psychiatrist. Like, yeah, psychiatrist. Yeah, yeah therapy. Psych therapy. Yeah, yeah, like, you went? Well, they had me come. Yeah, they had them come and talk to me. Okay. They're like, okay, I think we need to get this girl on some pills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, what? Uh, so, but I ended up starting that, and then, oh my goodness, that was not good. <laughs> Just, yeah. I found myself having like more like hallucination like at night like i was like yeah. oh no 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 <laughs> i was like i gotta get off of these drugs as soon as possible yeah so i cut like i got off of it like real quick um and then just go got back to the you know because when you're also like in that kind of situation you forget about the lord like sometimes you know you forget yeah about, yeah you forget about what you were always you know doing you know to help you um, so yeah, basically, I guess you let the, you let adversity take over, I guess that's pretty much mm -hmm. what it is. And we get so caught up in it. Right. Um, so I was thinking, why me, why me? But then I'm like, yeah, I'm asking the wrong question. Yeah. We got to ask the right questions. Yeah. Why that's is this what, happening? That's what it comes down to. Yeah. It's about asking the right questions. It's about. It's about perspective. Thinking, yeah. Yes, exactly. And then I was thinking. Now that I look at it, like look at it, I'm like it was <clears> more of a more like a, it was more of a, a open like awakening for me. Like, what is it now? Is the question was what is it that am I? What is it that you want me to learn from mm -hmm. this? You know, yeah. what is it that you want me to learn from my suffering, Lord? That's the question. Yeah, that's the question I was gonna ask. You know, like that's what that's the question that I needed to ask. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about it. I'm like, I was looking at it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Time. But I don't think anybody looks at it that way until, you know, the further they, you know, go along. But anyways, go ahead. So that's my little extra little share. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm, uh, no, thank you for sharing it, by the way. Um, and I'm glad you, I'm glad you shared that because um, like we mentioned, like we mentioned before, you know, life is all about perspective and, 
um, the one thing about life to all of us, like, you know, um, we're all going to go through pain. We're all going to go through some kind of struggle. Uh, we're all going to go through shit. That's just life, right? <laughs> but the, um, the reason why I, I love, you know, that you share that, you know, uh, not only with your uh, molestation, but not also what your mom went through and also you're going through lupus. You know, when I first, you know, when I first met you, you know, uh, on, the, on, the, on the call, right? And just based on my my, uh, my conversation with you, I feel so much positivity. I love your attitude. I love your energy, right? You know, yeah. if I if I when, when I met you for the first time, I would have, I would have never known that you went through the things that you went through that you just explained on this podcast, right? Yeah. So, and that's the beauty of life. I always tell people like things are gonna happen to us, and I always tell people all the time is like life doesn't happen against you; it happens for you. You know that we're all going to go through struggles. We're all going to go through pain. We're all going to go through hardship. Uh, but, but I truly believe that everything happens for a reason. Like life happened for you. Yeah. It happened exactly the way it happened for you, but it's up to us to have the understanding to see that, that hey, it happened. this happened for a reason yeah. to, to, push you, to push you forward. I do believe in the power of the universe, in God, that, the, the God has a plan for all of us and the universe has a plan for all of us to lead us towards our purpose, where we go and having challenges and hardship. That's just part of the path. It's not opposite of the path. I always tell people all the time, like hardship is part of our path. And people often think that when they go through a hardship, when they, when they go through a struggle, they yeah. think that, that they're on the wrong path. No, that's part of the path. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's meant to be there. It's supposed yeah. to be there. It's part of yeah. life. Right. So, um, you just got to figure out how to overcome those things and redirect and readjust so you can get back on track. Um, yeah. And, and, and I always tell people whenever, whenever, for me, my personal experience, I've met people just like you. I've met so many people who are happy. So many people who are the most loving people in this world. I met some, some, some of the most successful people in this world in my life. And what's very interesting, what's very interesting, what, what, what's the common denominator between you and all of them is that we all went through some type of struggle. Yes. All right. All yeah. of us. I, we all went through where we all went through some type of struggle, but we chose to see yeah. it in a different chose to see it in a different way. You know, yeah. it could have yeah. been very easy for you. Like I said, it could have been very easy for you or me or anybody out there to just become a victim, right? You know, uh, you know why this happened to me. You know why this, why this, why this? Blaming, making excuses, but yeah. you chose. But you chose, right? You made a choice. You know what? I'm in the hospital right now. You know. <laughs> getting my diaper changed <laughs> getting my diaper <laughs> changed like, uh -uh. Ain't right? but, but yeah but life. you made a choice you made a choice you know what as bad as life it is right now i can still rise from it right yeah. and there's always there's always a better tomorrow but i just gotta get myself together and get back up and figure things out and, and move on all right you keep getting back up yeah exactly how many times you get knocked down because um not, oh my gosh, there's so many things I want to tell you, but like, so, yeah. even after this all happened, mm -hmm. years later, I actually had a cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm. Literally, my heart flatlined. Oh, wow. Twice. Like, mm -hmm. they were like, you coded twice. <clears throat> like, what? They're like, yeah, you coded twice, man. You, you coded in dialysis. And then they brought you back. And then on the way there, they said it stopped again. Yeah. And then I was like, oh my gosh. Um, and I, I don't know, it's crazy because you're like thinking to yourself, like, what the hell am I doing wrong? Right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. You keep going through these things, right? These traumatic mm -hmm. situations. And then I was like, even when I was in the hospital, like over a month, like it was a little over a month. I, you know, had to recover, right? But when I woke up, uh, getting better, and then they're like, oh, you know, I ended up having a seizure. And then I was like, what the heck? I'm just like, can I catch a break? But then I'm thinking to myself, no, there's a reason exactly, you know, like you said, like now looking at it, it's like, there's a reason why I am still here. Yeah. The reason why I didn't just die when I, you know, yeah. I just died right then and there. But why didn't I? Yeah. Because there's a my life has a purpose. And I have not yet fulfilled it. 
-hmm. you know, and I'm like, that's how I see it now. Like, I know I have a purpose here and I know that's, you know, that's, that's why I think I'm, yeah. I think that's why I'm the way I am as well. Cause I know, you know, that I want others to see that as well, you know, yeah. in their life or whatever that they're going to get. So yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. The one thing I always, no, the one thing I always express to people that uh, one of my favorite life principles in life is pain is an indicator that something needs to change. Yeah. If you are feeling pain today, that's life telling you uh, telling you that something needs to change, and it's your responsibility to figure that out. And yeah. I, I'm sure that after you went through, uh, is it safe to say? Um, I mean, I'm just assuming, but when you went through your uh, Cardi cardiac arrest uh, yeah. with your heart heart failure did you start taking your health more seriously yeah i did actually i did <laughs> i was crazy because i actually did i started working out a lot more there we and go so, so even though i was still going to dialysis i was literally in the gym five in the morning there like, we go yeah i was like going to cycle class yeah I was, like up and you know i was ready and i was literally jogging the freaking hikes <laughs> like, like I was actually able to run and I was like yep. okay look at me I was just like what mm -hmm. oh my gosh but then we always fall back into that little rut again. yes but we keep getting like, our out of it exactly so that's why I always say tell the people is like if you are consistently experiencing the same pain then there is something that you are doing that's causing that to yes. keep coming back to your life and you have to reevaluate your life and uh, and look within yourself, what am I doing that's causing this? Especially, you know, it's real simple, like health, right? If you're having health problems, it's real simple. Yeah. What look at you look, what are you eating? What are you doing? What are you putting into your body that's causing you to have yeah. those problems? And you have to make adjustments. So that's something I always say to people when, when you're in pain, if it's physical, mental, emotional, relationships, whatever it is, something is not right. And you have to make a readjustment. You have to make a change. It's like, it's, it's, the way God in the universe is telling you to read, to make a change and redirect your life. And sometimes yeah. some of us are very lazy. Some of us are very stubborn. Some of us are very prideful. Some of us uh, don't want to accept responsibility to make these changes. So, but that's, that's something I always live by. When I, when I feel pain in my life, instead of worrying about the negatives, for me, it's a positive thing. When I feel pain, it's a positive thing. Like, oh, 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 God, what are you telling me? Life, what are you telling me? There's, exactly. there's something going. There's something going on right now. I know for a fact. I gotta start asking. The, like, like you said, ask the right questions. Yeah, we gotta um, ask. And, the right and do it and do a reevaluation. Uh, but the um the sad the sad reality is many people don't do that, and uh, because like you said, um, as human beings, we always uh, take the path of least resistance. You know, nobody wants to accept the path of making changes because you know change requires effort. Oh yeah. <laughs> And right. honestly, and the Lord loves effort. He, yeah. reward, he rewards effort. You know, yeah. you yeah. have to meet him. You have to meet him halfway. Yeah. You can't just expect him to just do everything. <laughs> like we have yeah. to do our part in order to receive those blessings. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so in translation, get your ass up and go to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in translation. All right. Just keep it, just keep it real. Keep it real. real All right. Yeah. All right. So, um, all right. So, okay. So you went through that, uh, that phase of your life. So I know you did mention you are an entrepreneur. Um, so, yeah. uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just interested in your path. How you, how did you go from that? Because, you know, you know, what's so amazing about your story, uh, when I'm, as I'm, as I'm listening that the fact that you went through all of that and you still became the person you are today. Yeah. Right. Many people, if you go, like a lot of people, that's why I always tell people, do not judge. I, I, I hate it when people judge other people because a lot of people, you, will ne you wouldn't even last a day in somebody else's shoes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, 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 but it's, so, it's so, so amazing to me that you went through that, but you still turn out to, to be the woman you are today because most people, like, they, if, most people, if they had that type of upbringing, they, their life would be in shambles right now and, like, you know, very in a very uh, terrible situation but the fact that you made an adjustment is pretty uh, it's pretty insp inspiring to me for anybody that's listening to this podcast so i do want to ask you how did you go from that and you and you became uh you, you know you found love you got married <laughs> yeah. you got married yeah. uh you're an entrepreneur 
you're living your own life, uh, finding your own happiness. Um, yeah, can you talk about that transition? Happiness? <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe not happiness, but I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you want to go to that? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I just want to talk about how you went from that and to get to this point of your life. Yeah, um, pretty much just learning, you know. I mean, I watch a lot of um, motivational speeches and speakers, like like I told you earlier, like Les Brown. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jim Rohn is a good one as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, Eric, I, I don't know, I, I'll kind of, anyways, but um, go ahead. Were you yeah, going to ask? Look. No, so I ask you, like, why did you, uh, why did you start to, um, what inspired you to be an entrepreneur? Yeah. And why did you start? They did pretty much. I mean, a lot of them did, obviously. Yeah. yeah. I love what they do. I love what they speak, you know. Um, it's it's true facts. It's like, honestly, what got me going to entrepreneurship, let's see. <sighs> I want to be my own boss, obviously. I want to be able yeah. to inspire others right mm -hmm. i mean yeah. like I, I honestly believe like i want to earn an income while inspiring others I'm just okay saying, that's yeah. what i really want to do i want to inspire others to live you know their dreams regardless of your situation no matter mm -hmm. your circumstances you can do it oh my goodness mm -hmm. you can do it i mean that's my goal that's pretty much why i really wanted to do this why I really wanted to do it is because of that reason. Okay. You know, I know, and I know a lot of people like tend to like put their dreams off or put it on hold mm -hmm. or just say, oh, I don't have this. I don't have enough money or blah, blah, blah. Like you don't need that. <laughs> it's like, you just need yourself and your heart, <laughs> mm -hmm. your heart of service or, that you have for mm -hmm. others. And you go like, that's all I that's just is how I see it. You don't need much, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's really what inspires me, is me being able to um, go through what I've gone through and yet mm -hmm. still have that aspiration in me to, you know, to do more. <laughs> just like to do more in this life than what's the norm. You know, I mean, like, just like, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to be mediocre. I'm sorry. I wasn't put on this. We weren't yeah. put on this earth to be like, to just be mediocre. No. I oh, okay. need that. No. I want to, yeah, we got to do more. Like, I want to do more. I know that, like, there's this quote that I put out. I don't know if you saw it. Um, oh, my goodness. Maybe you saw it. or Maybe you didn't. Let me see. I'm going to go look at it real quick. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, it's, um, so the graveyard is the richest place on earth. Yep. Because it's here that you will find all the hopes and the dreams that were never fulfilled. Yeah. The books that you were never, the books that were never written, right? The songs mm -hmm. that were The songs that were never right? sung. Yep. You know it. So, yep. <laughs> yeah. The inventions that were never shared. I mean, I love that quote so much. It's because it's so true. Like, how many people do you know die right and like I don't know I just feel like I don't want to die and not have written this book that you know written the book that I wanted to write yeah or like or, li or live the know, life that you wanted to live live yeah. a life that will be remembered to be honest yeah. yeah yes no I don't want that I don't want that for myself and I don't yeah. think anybody should to be honest that's not a life like I don't want to you know because people just work 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 until and then just go like nah i want to make an impact on the world i'm just like yeah. that's, that's my yeah that's my dream is that's my goal in life to be honest yeah and also I, and also i feel like that's also what what that's also what inspires people to heal from their trauma right because nobody wants to die with that trauma inside of them right no. yeah you don't want to you don't want to die with your pain you don't want to die with your misery as as traumatic as it was but you don't want to die with that as your last memory as your last experience right yeah so that's why that's why for a lot of people they choose to move on from it um because they just don't want to live with that their whole life or they don't want to die with that right and they want to make sure that their, their last their legacy they leave behind or the life they live they want to die with joy with happiness with wow. peace with love you know that's something you that's the life you want to live and that's the life that they want to be remembered for 
right? And that's one thing I always tell people, like, do you like, if, uh, are you really going to live your life that way? Are you really going to live your whole, whole life looking back in the past? Yeah. And because life is long, <laughs> even though life is short, you know, yeah. life is short if you live your best life, but life is long if you live in misery. True. You know, right? So, yeah. you know, so that's a, yeah, that's a, that's a, I love that quote too. You know, was that Les Brown? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's one of my favorite quotes. Yeah. I always tell people like, you know, live your best life and if you have a dream, you have an idea, you have a passion, pursue it because so many people, you know, uh, die every single day. And so many people were expecting to wake up this beautiful day that we are having a podcast today, but they didn't make it today. You know, people are waiting for you. You never know. Yeah. Like, you're going to inspire. Hey, exactly. Okay. So, you know, so many, you know, you know, so many people just, you know, so many people, so many people were planning to make a change today but didn't make it to today but it's too late so True. that's one thing i always say uh for me i always i always tell people the most people don't realize this but for me like the most valuable resource that we have in this world is time and that's the most precious gift that god gives us every single day beyond all, all things is time you know if you were given time today you're absolutely blessed <laughs> yeah. right i don't yeah. care what where you are i don't care where you are in this world i don't care what happened to you? Yeah, it is right. what it is. We 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 all have issues. We all have shit. We go through in life. But if you okay. woke up this morning, then you are absolutely blessed. God gave you a gift. That's up to you to make use of it and move on. So, yeah. so thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, uh, thank you for sharing your life story. Everybody that's watching right now, you know, if you got, you know, I know you got just ten, a chance to listen to her life story. If you have some thoughts, some comments, drop some comments below. Like, subscribe to this channel. Um, and I, I will be very interested to hear your thoughts and, and feedback on what uh, we talked about and shared. But I do want to go into some topics. We have some uh, some topics, some, <laughs> some hot topics um, that we want to discuss with you guys. Uh, as you guys know, we always want to promote happiness, love, success. So those are the topics I'm always trying to promote. Um, I do want to go into, uh, I know something that you mentioned um, before, um, People nowadays, uh, the reason why a lot of people don't live fulfilling lives, never grow, never become their best version of themselves is because a lot of people, especially Polynesian people, because we're both Polynesian, uh, a lot of people are very content, lazy, uh, and settled. So can you talk about that? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I mean, because I, I, I fall guilty to it a lot as well. Like, Yeah, yeah, of course. I think we all do Yes. Sometimes like, we just get like lazy, but I feel like we just got to think like, is this going to make, is this going to get me to where I want to be? Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I, I have that in my head now, like <laughs> all the time now, every time I try to make a choice or something, mm -hmm. like that's my question now, like, if, like every time, is this going to make me, <laughs> is this going to make me like get to where I want to be in five years from now? If not, then just forget about it. <laughs> just like, like, honestly, like soda is something I quit this year. Yeah. Barely. Like, I literally just made that decision. Oh, yeah. And, that's yeah. that's one of the, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, and like cutting soda from your life is probably one of the biggest, yeah. best decisions you can ever do because people don't realize how much sugar uh, is in one can of soda. One can of soda has 20 teaspoons of sugar. So if you got, Oh wow! Yeah. If you, if you yeah, if you got twenty, put twenty teaspoons. I, I challenge everybody: put twenty teaspoons in a cup and see see how much sugar that is. That's how much sugar you actually consume every single time you drink a can of soda. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's what. Well, I just knew it was bad, and I was yeah, like, I gotta quit this crap. Yeah. So I finally quit like this year, and I'm just I, I already feel a little difference in like the yeah. way I, even the way I, I'm starting to look too. Like I feel like. I'm yeah. like, okay. I'm just like, you look good, girl. You gotta do what you gotta do to make. But I feel like, yeah, we gotta do what we gotta do to like get to that point. To be honest, like, I think, yeah, that's what I do all the time. So I've tried not to be content with that. <laughs> I've been yeah. really good. I have been, yeah, I've been solid since January first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, which is like. I've been like in the beginning, it was hard because you're like craving it here. Like in the beginning, I guess it's always harder, right? Mm -hmm. When you're trying to quit a habit. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, I quit. Yeah. But I, you know what I did is found a alternative, mm -hmm. which is sparkling water. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. So I do the bubbly. I don't know if you know that brand. Have you heard of it? I've, yeah. I've heard of I've heard of it. Yeah. So it's bubbly or Perrier. I like Perrier too. So yeah. Yeah, that's what I drink now instead of soda. So I like it. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. But yeah, I think people get too, why do they get so content with everything? I think a lot of them just, yeah, they just don't want to go through, they don't want to go through the hard stuff. I yeah. think that's the thing. It's going to be hard though. I yeah. think anything, anything worthwhile, anything worth having is going to be hard. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to go through the hard stuff in order to get to, because like you said earlier, Nobody goes through, um, well, we all go through trials, right? We all go yeah, through yeah. hardships, yeah. but it's after the hardships that we yeah, it's, it's not, yeah, it's not what happens, it's how you respond to your hardships. Yeah, it's exactly. So we have to respond. Yeah. Yeah. Many people don't want to respond. People don't want to respond that way because it's, yeah. it's too hard. Effort. Yeah. <laughs> it takes hard effort. <laughs> for yeah. Me. Yeah. And, but... They have to, you just have to understand that it's through that where you're going to get to where you truly want to be. And yeah, truly um, happy. Well, happy really comes from within you. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's never from anybody else. Just, yeah. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> just like... do, you, do you feel like uh, Polynesians uh, can be very content and can be very lazy and and they oftentimes settle for so many things in their life. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. What are like the top areas of our life that you usually see Polynesians settle in? Um, sometimes I like in love. Love. Yeah. You see that? Ships, I believe. Some. What do you see? At least, at least I think that's some people do that. Um. They could have a really like abusive relationship, yeah. yeah. Physically and um, mentally, you know, yeah, emotionally, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But yet they still stay. Why do you feel like they stay? I would say sometimes it's family, you know, because they have children with that person. Oh, okay, society and religion. Yeah, and then that too, maybe like they don't. I think that's what it is. Like they feel like, oh, we have kids together already, and I don't want to have my kids, you know, like be brought up in two separate homes or two, you know, or two different livings, you know. Yeah. Which I don't. I mean, that would be hard. I I mean, I can see why that would be a problem, but. I feel like whatever is best for you would always be best for your child. Oh yeah, that's absolutely. You know, I believe that also. I believe that also. Like whatever you know to be best for you, like wholeheartedly, and you know, you know, like because I know within without a doubt, like we we know what's best for us. Like we know the the way to take the road to take. Um, for us to, you know, to move forward and be happier. Like we know, only we know, right? So everybody, mm -hmm. each and everybody knows the best, but yeah, but they're too afraid of, you know, starting over, I guess, or, mm -hmm. you know, going through that process again. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe that, you know, that whatever is best for you and is always going to be best for that, your child, for your kids, because they're, they rather see you happy than anything else you know they i mean they don't want to like yeah you want to stick together but i feel like if it's not healthy and if it's not you know like happy like a truly like a happy home like then why bring like you're you're, you're basically letting them see that it's okay like you know to do to to go through what they're going through you're, you're basically saying that it's okay to get abused you're saying it's okay to this 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 because you yeah. can see it you know you're basically letting them know that it's okay to go through that as well mm. you know what i mean i i don't know yeah. i mean i know i don't have children myself mm -hmm. 
So I wouldn't, I guess people would probably be looking at me like, oh, she don't know what she's talking about, but yeah. I'm just speaking from my perspective, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Uh, I believe that also. Like, I believe, like, if you're not happy in the relationship, if you're not happy in the relationship you're in, you know, I feel like it's necessary for you to leave into a situation and put yourself in a situation that makes you better and makes you happy. Yes. Um, I know oftentimes because of uh, culture, society, um, religion, uh, you know, men, uh, females, uh, you know, females, you know, uh, want to keep the family together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You know, that's, yeah. yeah. So, I, so I understand why they do that. But um, so, you know, of course, you know, that's what's taught in the Polynesian culture, keep the family together, yeah. religion, stay married, there's no divorce. So yeah. for a lot of Polynesian women that grew up in that upbringing, you know, they, they want to keep the family together. But I always, this is one thing I always say to them is, you know, it's like you said, you know, you, what's best for you is what's also best for the child because you have to understand our kids uh, replicate everything we do as a parent, right? True. Yeah. So your behavior, so uh, your mindset, your habits, um, your perspective, the way the uh, the way they see things is all going to come from from the parents. So um, that's why I always tell men and women, you know, if you're not happy, leave because the worst case scenario is uh, you, is the kid watching you in an unhappy relationship, in a very toxic relationship, and then that's going to become their expectation. Exactly. When's of what they doing? when they get when they become older. Um, and, I, and I've I've been with you know I've dated girls like that before where it was they were uh, it, it was sad to see that their expectation within the relationship was very toxic because that's what that that's what was normal for them. Yeah. And if, when you try to provide them a healthy relationship, they don't know um, how to. They don't know how to. They don't know how to take it. They don't know how to handle it. And for them, it's foreign. You know, yeah. it's foreign. So it's yeah so that's why i always believe that I, you know for every, that's why i always believe for everybody out there like you have to do what's best for you especially and i also believe like if, if you know uh, you don't necessarily have to stay with the the uh the, the biological father or mother for yeah. the sake for the sake of the child i know yeah. a lot of religions against that and a lot of people the punish your culture maybe against that but for me i've seen it too many times you know yeah, if the true. if the parent if the parents aren't happy the kids are probably not going to be happy <laughs> Right. Well, yeah, because they see, you know. What yeah, yeah, and exactly. They follow that, and it's like you gotta break that, right? We gotta, yeah, break, know, yeah. break the cycle. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Sure. So, all right. So, um, I do. So, I know you talked about settling and lazy and content. I know we discussed it already. I know we talked about happiness. I know one thing that you uh, you mentioned was like growing up, you felt like that being happy was trying to fit into society, right? Yeah. And then, and then you mentioned that. You figured out that happiness comes from within is a eternal is a internal journey, not a external yeah. journey. So yeah, can you talk about that? How how did you figure it out your own happiness? And uh, I want to ask you, what does happiness mean to you? What's your definition of happiness? What's your definition of happiness? What is my definition? Oh my goodness, um, it's just well for me. I, I got to think about me now. Don't try to yeah. think about Anything else? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. What I've learned is truly just happiness is, well, to me, it comes from God. <laughs> okay. Honestly, that's, that's happiness. Like for me, everything that I know of him and of my savior is happiness. Like that example that, you know, Christ set for us like is happiness to me mm -hmm. and I am like I tend to like want to emulate that as well mm -hmm. I think that happiness just being able to fully love you right we have to love ourselves and for who we are and um because my thing was oh my gosh especially with love right mm -hmm. like when I was with my husband it was crazy it was like you had to like you had all kind of people telling you what this and this and this is supposed to be looking like. Like, oh, you're supposed to, you know, have this, have this way. I'm like, eh, leave me alone. Oh, <laughs> like, what, what, what were the things that was, they were saying about your husband? Well, it was more like, oh, like, well, oh, well him, he was, okay, that was, he's very supportive. Like, because mm -hmm. I've been sick the whole time that okay. we've been together. 
Okay. So he, you know, they were like, oh, like that's, you know, basically they're, you know, probably telling him like. Why? Girl's... Yeah. yeah like, why? Why is it with you? Yeah. Like that girl is sick. You know, what do you, you know, what you do it where, you know, did you yeah, know that yeah. she has this and this, like she's going to like, you yeah. know, but he was like, yeah, you know, who cares? Like, <laughs> how'd was, you go? How'd, how'd you guys meet by the way? Oh, it was through family actually. Um, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't in the hospital. <laughs> no. oh, oh, he was here. Yeah. He always came to see me in the hospital, but no, Yeah. it was a birthday party. Birthday? Okay. It was before actually. It was right before I got really sick, actually. Okay. Yeah, just after my mom, yeah, passed, and then I oh, came so, out. Oh, yeah. it's a childhood. It's a childhood friend. Yeah. Yeah. This was no, no. We just met after my mom passed. Oh, okay, okay, got you, got you. Okay, okay. <laughs> but yeah. Um, anyway, okay. yeah. It was crazy, but um, yeah, it was a lot of you know. You always get those outside. Yeah, negative voices. You, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Side views from your family, his family, and blah blah blah. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, oh, she doesn't have, you know, she's not working, she's not doing this. So it's just like, yeah, cares? <laughs> just like, but yeah. Um, anyway, it took time for us to go through. We went through a lot, obviously. Yeah, um, get to where we've been, and um, you can imagine, like, I, I think when I went through that trauma, when my heart stopped. Yeah. We got we got married after that. <laughs> oh wow! Literally nice. right after my heart stopped, like after that traumatic situation. Yeah. We, like the year after that, I was like, oh, let's get. Let's get married. Like, be married already. Come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like it kind of made us like, oh, what are we waiting for? Mm -hmm. we, you know, it was that kind of thing. Like, we've been together this long. We love each other. Let's do it. So we got married the year after that which is, yeah, 2013. Um, and then, yeah, but when you're, okay, because I never lived with my husband. Okay. Never lived with him until after I got married. <laughs> yeah. So. That's normal, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, and then, of course, your first time being married, right? You're like, yeah, brand new, right? So. This whole different situation because you know when you're not living together obviously it's different you know yeah because, yeah you don't see each other every day yeah you don't see what each other you know what what each other like what you guys both do on yeah. a daily basis your habits <laughs> yeah yeah so that took a lot of getting used to <laughs> yeah when we first it was it was crazy it was like driving me nuts <laughs> so yeah, that took some getting used to. And I think literally after only, I think, a year of being married, um, we actually separated. <laughs> okay. Yes. I'm going to put that out there. We separated. Yeah. Yes. And um, I was like, I got to go. <laughs> Just like, I was like, I get out of this house. It's driving me nuts. Yeah. <laughs> but that's because, you know, I'm learning now. Well, at least... Okay, anyway, but during that process of me leaving um, to live with family, of course, I was like looking at it from outside in, right? So it takes, it, 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 it's a good, it was a good thing for me, I believe, like to, for me to leave the situ like uh, the situation during that time. Like, I'm glad I did leave because it actually helped me see from the outside in and help me to like really take that time to not only um, find who I was again, but then also um, see the good and the bad, like in, yeah. you know, in our, you know, um, marriage at the time. Mm -hmm. And it was more good than bad, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. And then the little bad things were the, the bad things were literally like small things, <laughs> you know, that you can like literally work on. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't anything like big. Like for me, I feel like if it's not infidelity, if it's not abuse, if he's not cheating, if he's not being abusive to me, 
um, physically, emotion, like you know, in those areas, then you can work on your marriage. <laughs> Just then yeah. you can get out. Yeah, you know, I truly believe that. So I saw that, all that, like for what it was, like in all the little things that were bugging me, I was like, oh my gosh, that's not even. It wasn't really big, you know. So I was like, okay, you know what, Trudy. <laughs> get over your crap and just go yeah. back and, you know, and make it work. So I, you know, that's, that's really what I learned, you know, it was really more, and it wasn't so much of him. So it was a lot of stuff that I had to work on as well, mm -hmm. you know, internally it, in myself. So, yeah, I believe that's what happiness is. It's just learning to love you for who you are, but then also knowing that, you can love someone for who they are as well, you know, for what they are, for who they are. So, so I guess in essence, like even, yeah. No, so I want to. So in essence, you feel like that you uh, living together with somebody was something you weren't ready for, but then you went through it and then needed some time off, and then to figure out yourself and get back on and get back to it. Yeah, pretty much. I think that's what it was. Yeah. I took time out to really, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, and then also, it, it, like, it's important to really keep your relationship, like, fresh as well, to, like, keep on doing the things that you used to do when you were dating. Okay. So, yeah, I think that's important, too. I want to ask <laughs> you, like, you know, I know there's a lot of women that watch this uh, podcast, so what, what, will, what will be your top three advice to the young ladies out there that's watching this uh, before they get married? Oh, before you get married, just yeah. uh, take time to <laughs> just like, um, like I was saying, take time to really know yourself and know who you know what you want mm -hmm. in your um, marriage. Well, in a marriage, okay, or in a man as well. Yes, mm -hmm. but then don't have too high expectations of <laughs> just like I think yeah. a lot of us women have a lot of high expectations of like what we want right like in a man my goodness I had like a my, my vision was like Paul Walker and like <laughs> just like <laughs> yeah like um somebody like that or I don't know who else too I don't, there was a lot of like celebrity what? that I compared to but my husband's the opposite of that <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you just yeah, I don't know. Just don't have expectations. Just go with. I feel like when you know, you know, you know. Like it's it's like as long as, at least for me, like he's a good like he was. My husband's a really good man. Like and he loves me, even though he loves me differently. You know, because everybody has their way of loving. You know, you but, you know, and how you you receive love, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. So I know, I know you have a lot of, I'm sure you have some like uh, some single friends and uh, that's probably the same age as you, right? Uh, this, yeah. Two, yeah, right? So younger, what, uh, what, yeah, same age or younger. Um, I'm always interested to hear because I always um, hear, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, girls or women that, you know, are uh, older uh, and they always like, they always complain or struggle about the, like the dating, trying to date today. So what are the, what are the, what are the questions I, uh, for any say there's a woman right right now watching this that's uh, in their uh, in the thirties just like you, they're trying to uh, they're trying to figure out relationships, they're trying to figure out dating. Um, yeah. What are the things that you, conversations that you have with your friends that are trying to find love at this point of the, point of time in their life, and what are the struggles that they go through? A lot of their struggles that they go through is like. Just they're like, oh, complaining about little things, I guess. And then like, not all, like. When it comes to dating, like when, what the, when it comes to dating and trying to find love, yeah. what are the. Commitments, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Commit, for trying to find guys are committed. Yeah. Like guys, yeah. Guys who want to actually stay in a like and work things through. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much what they tell me, like struggle with. Yeah. Like, I can, like doesn't want to do this. This is I'm like it's just a little thing. Like you guys can get through it, right? She's like, yeah, but yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know. It's hard because I, I mean, I dealt with a lot. Obviously, look at how long. I mean, because I've been with my husband for 14 years. Yeah, 
and we went through a lot <laughs> just like yeah yeah um so yeah i i don't know that's pretty much what they tell me it's just commitment issues like guys don't yeah. stay long like once something's wrong like they just throw in a towel and just move on yeah yeah i think that's the issue you know it's like they need to well i don't oh, i guess it depends <laughs> yeah it is like i was saying but i think that's the thing about nowadays this generation too it's like they don't do that anymore like how it is before like mm -hmm. well you know how it is where people stay and fight and just get through all the trials together i mean a lot of them yeah. just they rather just move on thinking that the other person that they're gonna meet is gonna like be any better than that person i feel like there's always something wrong in every really there's always something gonna be wrong with anybody mm -hmm. there's always gonna be something that you're not gonna like mm -hmm. but it's a matter of you being able to work through them together mm -hmm. that's where it comes i think that's where it really count, comes down to. Mm. yeah and then if that person is willing to also work through whatever it is that's wrong like that's bugging you like you tell them about it and they change it then and they you know make that conscious effort to do that and not do it again then I think that's where it matters most okay any sense to me does that make any sense to you i mean sorry no, no, that makes sense to me. Uh, no, I feel like I feel like the I feel like the culture has changed the definition and meaning of commitment or dating, per se. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. You know, because I, I feel like <clears throat> back in the day, you know, when my parents grew up, you know, like uh, when dating meant marriage. Like if you dated somebody, everybody knew on both sides. There was like a clear understanding from both sides, the men and women, if a man approach you to uh to date you to pursue you um as Most men we as men we knew women were looking for marriage and so we knew that the expectation was already set the rules was already set okay dating meant marriage like if i dated a female if i dated uh uh, uh if you dated somebody you would uh, you wanted to pursue it, the purpose of it was to lead towards marriage and getting married right yes yes so because of culture everything's have changed now where nowadays, you know, they're encouraging people to live your best life and go seek a career and, you know, do your thing and, and push marriage later. Yeah, later. That's the culture that I, uh, that's the culture I see on social media. It's all like encouraging men and women to delay marriage. Don't worry about marriage. Go live your best life, fulfill your goals and dreams, yeah. fulfill your passion, which is, which is, you know, it is what it is, right? Yeah. So that's, and of course, dating no so dating no longer means marriage no more. Dating just means having fun. <laughs> yeah. That's what dating. That's what they, that's what that's the way I perceive it now. Like when people date, they yeah. they, they, no, they no longer date. It'd oh, be very rare. That's how it was. How it's it was rare. Rare. Yeah. So just like when uh, we were first dating, because I was uh, I was uh, eighteen. Yeah. He was seventeen, so of course you know, you know it was all fun and games in the beginning, but then <laughs> you know. Unless, I mean, unless you grew up very traditionally or in a, in a religion, but most people, when they date, nobody's thinking about marriage. You know, most people are dating for other reasons besides marriage. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's like, that's like the norm now, you know? Yeah. So, and that's, and that's really, really hard, especially if you're somebody that wants to get married and wants a commitment uh, and uh, try to find commitment in a culture uh, where most people are not looking for it or, or they want it or they want it, but they don't want it now. They want it later. Yeah. They want it later on in life. So but sometimes it happens. But but what I the one thing I would do is say is there's there's a lot of men out there that want marriage and commitment. There's a lot of women out there that want marriage and commitment. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like the problem is it's just people not being upfront and and, uh, yeah. and and letting people know their standards and their expectations up front and making sure like they have a plan or purpose behind their mm -hmm. dating. Right. Yeah. So like, because most people are afraid, you know, most people are afraid to get hurt, afraid of rejection, afraid to express their feelings. So that's one thing I, I always tell them. Yeah. Uh, one thing I always, I, this is the way I do it. When I meet somebody, if I'm going to date somebody, I, I let them know up front, like, 
Yeah. I'm old school. Hey, look, I'm not dating you just to date you. I'm dating you to be in a committed relationship. I'm dating you to take this. I'm looking for marriage one day. So just setting like the expectations right there in the very beginning to yeah. let them know what I want, right? So Definitely. if they if they if they if they're okay with it, if they if that's something they want, great. But if something they don't want, then uh, it's okay. They can it's, move on. It's just don't waste time. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, I I think too like whenever you express yourself, like you know, like it's coming from you, well, coming from your heart. Like I, I believe solely that it's never wasted. Like you yeah. never, you can't go wrong because you being your authentic self. Yeah, you know, yeah. You're, you're literally just being who you are, and and you can never go wrong with that. Like I always believe that, you know, no matter. Yeah, you have to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I believe in the energy. Like I believe in energy. Like your your uh, your vibe will you attract your tribe. You know. Yeah. So don't be afraid to be yourself. Yeah, exactly. Be authentic. Be authentic self. Be you know, speak your love, speak your truth, speak your energy. Give out that energy, and a lot of people, like I said, the people that can't handle you will stay away from you. But the people, so but the people that are in line with your energy to see things the way you see things, yeah, they stay. Yeah, they stay. They'll come over. They they find you, right? Exactly. Because one of the things that one of the things I often see a lot of people. I know you were talking about like a lot of people when it comes to happiness, they try to fit into society. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people, because nowadays everybody's like playing games when it comes to dating, you know, playing the game, right? Talking, you yeah. know. So, so often I often see a lot of people who are old school, very traditional. They they want commitment, they want marriage, but they try to play everybody else's game, like you know, trying to talk to multiple people, trying to play games with other people because they think that's how they should. Yeah, that's, that's how they should, that, that, that's how to approach it because that's what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Uh, and I always tell people, see, the, the problem with that is, is uh, you have to, if you want commitment in marriage, the only way you can attract somebody that wants commitment in marriage, you have to make it clear and make that, and make sure you tell it the world, look, I am looking for commitment in marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> so you the, have to put it out there. Yeah. You have to put it out there. You know, you can't try to pretend like you're not looking for it or you can't keep it within you. Um, so you have to let them know some people that are looking for it can see, oh, okay. They're looking for the same thing I'm like looking they're, for. They're serious, yeah. They're not yeah. going to play around anymore. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, I often see a lot of uh, girls, right, on social media, that, like they want marriage and commitment. But if you look, if you look at their social media profile, they're projecting a single life. Yeah. <laughs> like you look at their profile, their, their profile screams, I don't need a man, I'm single, I'm living my best life. But deep mm-hmm. down, like they want to... Yeah. Uh, I, I always have to remind, like guys and girls to do the same thing, like, Remember, like, image is perception, perception is reality. So yep. it doesn't matter if you want commitment in a relationship, but the way you live your life, the way you, you know, how you project yourself on social media, exactly. that's, that's what people are going to see. So if I'm a guy, if I'm a guy that wants to get married and I, and I see you and I'm interested in you and I look at your profile and all you're doing is like, I don't need, I don't need a man and I'm just here living my best life. and Taking them away. <laughs> I'm like, oh. It looks like she's not ready for marriage. Swipe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I see another, yes, and I see another girl's profile. She's like, you know, but the, the way she uh, she posts, like, I'm ready to settle down. I'm looking for, you know, I'm looking for, uh, I'm looking for marriage. I'm looking for love. And oh, okay, that lets me know. So yeah, exactly. I just I just yeah. wanted to say say that to a lot of women out there because, uh, and men too, but. Yeah, if yeah, you want yeah. marriage, if you if you want marriage and commitment, make sure you're living a life and projecting that image that you are ready yes, for commitment. Yeah. Especially yeah. especially girls, because I always tell them, girls, like guys, we have to approach you, and uh, we're not gonna approach you if if we feel like it's it's gonna fail. <laughs> or if you're or if you're out there like posting like party pictures. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like, all out, said, out no, there. Oh yeah. Party Ooh, pictures, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, party pictures, turning up. Look, like I, I have nothing. Look, I have, I, I, look, yeah. I don't, I don't have any issues. If you want to twerk, party, turn up, <laughs> post, you, post, yeah. you know, naked, half naked pictures. Hey, do, live your best life. But I just need you to understand that perception is reality, right? So for most men, that if they look at you and you're doing those things, you know, I'm not here to judge, but most men will look at that like that's not a, a woman I would want to put a ring on their finger 
or like settle down yeah settle or, down with so it look like they want to settle down they want to go yeah sit on yeah yeah, yeah. Sit at yeah the exactly like, exactly yeah so i'll uh, just be aware yeah. of what you of, of the energy you're putting out you know so yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, for, yeah even guys too like if i'm a guy like if i want to attract a woman like i like a good woman i can't go out there and just tell you know just say hey all women are terrible all women are unloyal yeah. <laughs> so so same just make sure uh that you are like i said i think be your authentic self and just make sure that you know if you want commitment in relationship then make sure you are living that committed in relationship life <laughs> that you are that person first before yeah yeah it's know. something that you, you really want to see you really want to seek okay cool all right so um yeah, so we uh we yeah, we go. You still want to say something? No, no. No, no. Oh, okay. I'm waiting. All right. Me. All right. So I guess the last thing we'll just talk about real quick before we uh, close up the podcast, talk about success. Uh our surroundings. I know you mentioned about, you know, uh how sometimes our surroundings can our surroundings can stop people from su- from succeeding or growing or evolving. So what does that mean to you? Oh, man well like i don't know because like growing up right i hung out with a lot of people that smoke drank right yeah and i ended up doing those things right yeah but then you realize like you don't have to be that way you know like you know like you don't but it's hard because it's harder when you're around those things because It's, it's just constantly at, you know, at you, right? It's like a temptation, yes. like every single time. So you want to be careful with who you surround yourself with because it helps you, you know, it's actually like, whether or not you realize it, <laughs> their, their thought, like what they're, the way they live their life and the way they're doing things and you're always around them, it does affect you. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really does. Um especially if they're speaking like negatively like negatively or whatever about what you're doing or Mm -hmm. even though you're trying to like move up in the world and come out of that rut that you used to be in i think that was me i was always victim to be honest like i i would let like okay like my health right a lot of people used to tell me you're always you're sick you don't need to do that you're on dialysis what are mm-hmm. you doing this for? Like, you need to just focus on you, like getting better. And I'm like, okay, I understand that, but I am better. You know what I mean? Like, I'm already good. Like, so just leave me alone. Like, people will try to like, basically, yeah, like just make you. I just felt like they would just try to keep me down. Yeah, like down, like just the same, like girl that I used to be. Like, you're well, sick. Just stay there. You don't need to grow. Like, I don't know. That's how I felt. At least that's how I took it. Yeah. You know, you try to keep me like, oh, you're sick. You don't need to be driving. You don't need to be doing this. You don't need to be going to work. I'm like, eh. Don't tell me what I need to do. <laughs> just like, yeah. Stuff like, I am sick. Okay. Who cares? I'm just yeah, like, they were like, like, they were trying to pull, like, they were trying to pull limitations on you. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's what it felt like. You know, yeah. like your own family sometimes can do that to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mainly, I guess <laughs> it's mainly that, you know, because they're like, no, you're especially with all the trauma that I went through. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, no, you don't need to be doing that no more. And I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> I'm just thinking to myself, I have to. That's the point. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to push past those things because, my goodness, no, I don't want to die and not be like remembered as <laughs> something like mm-hmm. I want to be remembered you know, as somebody that made an impact in lives, like that's bottom line. Like I have my goals, I have my dreams. I'm going for it no matter what. Okay. Like, that's just how I'm perceiving everything right now. Yeah. Life, you know, so. Yeah. But, it's like, mm-hmm. yeah. But I want to take other people with me. It's not just about me. Yeah. You no. Know? That's so, how you do it. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You're absolutely right. You know, uh, your surroundings, your surroundings has a big impact to uh, uh, to who you become. You know, um, I think one of my favorite sayings uh, is just, you know, you know, we become uh, the five people we spend the most time with. 
you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, um, so it's very important to pay attention uh, but, to who's feeding your mind. Uh, yeah. Because like I said, everything starts with the mind. You know, it's your mindset. And um, you have to make sure what's coming in. You know, what's, what are the things that's coming in and out of your mind, right? Oh, OG, brain. you got... Yeah, yes. OG Mandingo, the greatest salesman of the in the world. Yeah, that's one of my favorite. I love that book. Yeah, I love it. Um, Always feed your mind. Yeah. If um, yeah, and, positive uh, affirmations every day. I say to myself, yeah, positive affirmations yeah. every day. You know, if you ever you know, if you ever look at the people uh, that became great at what they did, you know, they aligned themselves with people that were aligned with their own journey, purpose in life. So, you know, a lot of people, the biggest mistake they uh, they do is they never put themselves in a situation or be around people that's going to encourage them to grow, you know, uh, be in a positive environment. And um, that's why for me, I always tell people one of the biggest things you can do, especially if you're young, is to leave your house or leave your hometown or go spend some time alone by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that. You have to. I always tell people all the time. That's one of the best things you can, you can do as a as a young. Yeah, Jay Shetty. I love him. Love that guy. Think like a monk. So like, fine. You know, you have to. You have to get outside of your environment. You have to get outside of your environment. Get outside of the people that you know for a fact that's not encouraging you to do better. Uh, but it's really a lot of people can't do that because they because you have to make the hard choice to cut people off. That's just the, how it is in life. You have to cut people off. What yeah. if it's family? What if it's friends? You gotta lose a lot of uh, yeah. Well, trust like in, in your um journey to success, yeah. you're gonna lose a lot of people, but it's always worth it. I believe yeah. that. Yes. Yeah, even I don't know. I know a lot of people that lost. You know. Even, yeah, you have to. Yeah, that's just part of the. That's like I said. That's a part of the price you have to pay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like 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 hard work and effort and sacrifices and change. Yeah, that's part of the price. And also losing friends, and uh, you, and um, every single time you you level up or grow to a different version of yourself, it's always going to require you to level up and uh, your level of friends and grow, outgrow your friends, and put yourself with friends that's always going to encourage you to do it better. And um, yeah, you just can't like you know what's that old saying? You know, you hang around five broke people, you're going to be the sixth broke person. <laughs> that's oh, that's my, yeah, I heard that right? one. Yeah, definitely. You know, hang around, all right. If you hang around five uh, wealthy people, then you're going to become the sixth wealthy person. It's the same thing. Yep. doesn't matter what you do. So you can be the most talented person in the world, have all the knowledge, have very smart, very, uh, have a lot of intelligence. But if you always hang around five negative, broken people, then you're just going to become a, pro a product of your environment. Okay. Exactly. Amen. All right. So amen. 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 So uh, we've uh, come to the end of the podcast. Judy, I really intro enjoyed your podcast. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, you know, sharing the, the every um, things that, uh, that was, I know is hard. A lot of things you shared today was really hard, but thank you for sharing it for the people out there that's going through similar experiences. Again, encourage, empower, inspire them to keep moving, keep growing, uh, so they can find their happiness, love, and the fulfillment in their life. So thank you so much for sharing your life story. Much thank love you. to you. Okay. I uh, you. Yep. Yep. And uh, the one thing I always ask every guest on every show at the end, uh, if they can just share some final thoughts, some final words at the end to everybody out there that's listening, that's watching, and then we'll just end the podcast with that. Oh. It's all you. Yeah, it's all you. Go ahead. Okay. Well, oh, my goodness. Just live your life for you, okay? Not anybody else. You know, don't, don't worry about anything. It just always just focus on you. <clears throat> Focus on you. Focus at you know the task at hand and your goals. Just go for your dreams, um, no matter what they are. To be honest, you can do it. I feel like a lot of us, you know, we tend to just sweep it to the side. Like ah, I can't do it. I'm too old, or I'm too young, or I'm too. I'm already this, this. No, it doesn't matter. You have a dream. You have a goal in your heart, a desire to fulfill in your life. Go after it no matter what you can do it and um i love you all um <laughs> reach reach out to me if you want any time i'm here i'm here for you if you need um some uh 
yeah, somebody to talk to as well, you know, like Will Cousy. Um, <laughs> you always reach out to him for if you need um, anybody to talk to about, you know, like anything, mental health, anything you got going on in your life. I'm, I'm willing to hear. I'm willing to lend my ear as well. Um, I think, Will, you will tag me or something, right? In your little. Yeah. Like, yeah. In your, I mean, your stuff in your Instagram and stuff. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah. So, um, I uh, love you all and um, stay safe and um, healthy through these times. Um, love you all and God bless. Thank you again, Will, for this opportunity. It's been an honor. And um, it's my very first one, guys, by the way, as you can, I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> Just like, 